it's Jeff Chalmers here from discoverdoublebass.com, which is the home of online learning for double bass players for the last decade. We've been sharing our courses, our masterclasses, and interviews with some incredible artists, such as the one that you're about to meet today. So if you want to learn more about us, please go and visit discoverdoublebass.com. Now, today's guest is a Hungarian bass player living in the UK. So we're going to be learning more about well about their journey and how they uh, how they came here and developed their playing. They're really renowned for uh, well their wonderful voice as a soloist, but they also work um, with many of the UK's leading orchestras. They're an active teacher. They are very active on social media, so I'm sure that you will have uh, in you know have experienced their playing before. And one of the really cool things uh, that they've been doing recently is their own concert series called A Night with the Double Bass. So it gives me enormous pleasure to welcome to Discover Double Bass. It's Gerda Koshish. <laughs> Good. Have I got your name correct there? Yes, that's correct. Is that yeah. okay? Yes. I've been saying your name wrong, so it's Kotchish. Yeah? Yes, it's Kotchish. Yes. Oh, well, welcome. Nice. It's fantastic for you to join Thank us here so in Leeds. Thank you for coming up and uh, bringing your wonderful double bass. And whilst I've been researching your playing, one of the things that really I, I really take from it is, is how much you just love the instrument. It shines through. You're mm. out there sharing it with you know the general public. Yes. When did you first fall in love with the double bass? I think the first time when I fell in love with the bass was on a concert. So my mom took me to a chamber orchestra concert, and that's where I met my first teacher. Um, her name is Eva. Eva. And um, I just love that she's alone. So I felt like she has a very important role in the orchestra, and and I just felt challenged to <laughs> do the same. That's wonderful. And and. When did you really hear the double bass played as a solo instrument? I think I found solo playing on YouTube for the first time because I thought the double bass is just an instrument and they use it in the orchestra. So first I never really thought about playing any solos. I thought you have to play some solo pieces on the exam, but most of the time you are sitting in the orchestra. So when, when I got really interested in the instrument, then I started my research online mm -hmm. and then I met these big pieces like um, bass concertos. So I was listening to some Bottazini concertos and oh. Dittersdorf, Van yes. Hal, and, and just the, the technical abilities that people could play on the bass was um, just um, very shocking to it, me. It is so, shocking. Yes. And, and I think it's wonderful because you've been doing this concert series called A Night with the Double Bass. Yes. And where you're presenting the double bass in contexts where people might not be familiar with the double bass or even with classical music. I mean, what's the reaction been like from the public hearing you play this incredible instrument? What do they how do they respond when they hear it for the first time? <laughs> I mean I think we, we got some really good feedback from the audience and I make sure that my concerts are free for the people to come. Oh really? Yes. So wow. they can um, enjoy and experience what is it like to come to a classical concert. And uh, most of the people they never heard the bass as a solo instrument. They know something about it maybe on a picture from a yeah. picture on in the orchestra. Um, but other than that, they are always very welcoming and just curious about oh. the sound. What What are some of the pieces that you, that people particularly respond to? Is there one that, that you found that people really enjoy and they're excited to hear? Um, I make sure that I, I introduce the bass as, as an instrument yes. when I start my concerts. So I usually play the Elephant by Saint-Saëns. Oh, wonderful. And people really enjoy hearing that piece. So you're a Hungarian bass player and you're living now in the UK. What was it that brought you over here to join us? Uh, how did you come to be living in, in Birmingham? I always wanted to study abroad. Um, I was thinking of doing an Erasmus after my bachelor's degree. But at the last year of my bachelor's year, third year, I went to a competition to Slovakia, to the International Dittersdorf competition. Oh, wonderful. And there I met uh, my teacher, Thomas Martin, and, and then I thought I could just apply and study oh, in Birmingham with him. Oh, well, it's fantastic. And I read on uh, online as well that you actually got a full scholarship to attend, yes, which is I a really did. wonderful thing. And Yes, it's, 
really uh, like a life changing opportunity and I'm very grateful for it. So you must have done so much work to get to the point that you were invited to this the Royal Conservatoire in Birmingham. Maybe you could speak about your, the early days of uh, your playing. So who were you taking lessons with? You mentioned that you heard Eva play, I think you said her name yes. was. Did you take lessons with her in the end? Or, yes, uh, so I started um, with Eva. Yeah. Um, in the music school, I was having half an hour lessons a week. And then after a year, I could join the youth orchestra, which really gave me this push to maybe this is my path. And and um, that's what I would like to do. Then that's when I decided that I would like to take the double bass very yeah. seriously. And then I went to the Leo Weiner Conservatory, which is like a, like a high school in Hungary, but like a music high school. So we have our lessons in the morning and then in the afternoon till night we have the music lessons. So then after the high after the high school you attended um, the academy. Who was your teacher there? So I studied with uh, Peter Kubina. Ah wonderful. For three years. Yes it was a very nice experience. And were you learning a lot of solo music there? Were you being introduced to the solo repertoire and uh, or did that tend to come later? Were you still working mostly on orchestral repertoire? How did... I think I was working um, both solo and yeah. orchestra, but that's that's where I really met the the orchestra repertoire and took it more seriously because we had um orchestra symphony orchestra, and I had to learn the the excerpts that's and amazing. the music. And then you you, you joined this comp, you took part in this competition, and I believe, and that's where you met Thomas Martin. Could you yes, maybe talk true. to us a little bit about about that experience? That must have been sounds like life changing if you ended up moving <laughs> to the UK. Yes, I think it was a. A life-changing experience. So yeah. I went to the competition, and I got first prize. Yes. And then after the competition, uh, we we could stay for a couple of days and yes. have master class. Have a master class with um, very established uh, double bass players, and that's when I have had a lesson with um, Thomas Martin. What were some of the things that you were studying with Tom that when you have you've gone on to do your your master's degree with with mm -hmm. Tom? What are the kind of some of the, the the areas that you have been focusing on with him? Is it is it technical? Is it more about phrasing and developing your solo playing? I'm fascinated because he's such a wonderful you know person in the double bass world and his influence is so so huge. So maybe you could speak about that experience and some of the things maybe that you, you focused on in that time. Yeah, so when I, I started study, studying with Tom, um, I got a new idea of um, bass playing because before that I had a, I, I think I was studying with from a different school. Tom is um, teaching the Italian school, bass school, and I never heard of it before. So it was a, a new a new thing that I was introduced to. So I started learning these um, Italian studies and the Biele method book, which I really enjoy. And did the fingering change for you at that point? Was that quite different from what you were you were using before with the Italian school? Is it more? Is it, are you dividing the hand differently? Or um, I'm not. I'm not using the the third finger. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. what's written in the, the yeah. Biele's book. Yeah. Um, but but just the melody and and the ideas and the phrasing. Maybe you could speak a little bit more about that. I'd love to hear more about the kind of things that Thomas wants from his students. Uh, you know, what does that bring to mind? Yes, yeah, so I think when I moved here, I struggled a bit with um, the musicality and phrasing. I couldn't. It was a thing that I just couldn't figure out by myself. And I and I knew that I want to play expressive and and I wanted to have a nice tone and sound yeah. but I just couldn't find it myself so I was very grateful that um, Tom could somehow magically <laughs> teach me how to play more musically and be expressive and and um, I didn't know what's the secret and, and I was really focusing on the left hand and then Tom was teaching me more about the right hand and how we could use the the bow as as a brush, as a paint brush, okay. and just um, my wrist and the arm forearm wasn't very relaxed, so I had to really Can work on it. Can you show us what it. that looks? Yes. Yeah, so. yeah. And also the portato playing. Um, the importance of playing portato and using that as, as as phrasing and 
So you're really understanding about bow control. This yes. is so your bow control is making you more expressive. With do you think maybe your focus was too much on the left hand because of the intonation and your yes, you know, I think ignoring so. this side maybe. Yes, I, I thought that's also the articulation. It's in the left hand, and you have to play everything out in the left hand. Yeah, and also I'm I'm left-handed. That's fascinating. So I think that's why I also struggled controlling my right hand. Okay. Because phrasing and and articulation is is in in the right hand as now I understand it. Of course some things can be in the left hand but you can really speak with your right hand and with the bow. In, in terms of the left hand was was that part of your development with Tom were you talking about you know and, and phrasing as well maybe you could speak a bit about phrasing and the use of vibrato in the left hand mm -hmm. in, in what you were Yes on. I think um, yes with, with um, learning how to use the portato in the right hand and how to how to play as we would sing as an opera singer would sing I uh, started to work on my vibrato as well but I think it's very important to be relaxed in both hands so your shifting is also relaxed so you can't really hold on to the neck because then you can't do a nice vibrato but if you are relaxed then the vibrato can come naturally. Yeah you shift around very easily and you seem very comfortable playing standing. Are you, do you always play standing or seated? Is it a mix of the two? Um, I started standing and then I tried just for a couple of months at the academy. How is it like to sit sitting down? Yeah. And in orchestra, I, I enjoy, of course, sitting <laughs> for a longer time. But um, I, I found it hard to reach the, the higher register yeah. and the position when I was sitting, maybe because my arms are not too long. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes, I think for me, standing is better than sitting. Yeah. Oh, it's, there's certainly a real freedom with, um, with the way that you play. And what's your career looked like since you've you've graduated? You've had a few years now of the in the UK, and tell us about some of the things you're doing. And are you doing much teaching? Um, yes, I graduated uh, one and a half years ago from the Royal Birmingham Conservatoire, and since then, I'm teaching a lot online. I was teaching a year here in Leeds at the Leeds Conservatoire, which I really enjoyed. And um, yes, I have a lot of students online, and I I think I I really found my passion in teaching. But next to teaching, I, I love playing solo and just um, performing and showing the double bass. Do you find um, that you have uh, students from all over the world? And Yes, I have uh, yeah. students from all over the world. I have a lot of students from um, the States. It's very surprising. That's cool. And um, yes, they all found me um, on Instagram. So oh. that's, that's also a good... <laughs> I think it's so positive what you're yeah. doing and what you're sharing. Yes, yes. So I'm, I really enjoy helping others. Um, and, and I think because cause I spent some time alone in the room and practicing and learn how to, how to solve problems on the base and technical mm. difficulties, then I'm able to help others. And especially with the German bow, the right hand, that's what usually we work on with my students. And um, fingerings and the technique, I think it's very important to have a strong um, base, basic knowledge and foundation so you can build on it later. What are some of the issues that you see that are quite common when you get somebody coming to you who really wants a, a specialist German bow teacher? What are they usually doing that's that's not working for them? I think just exactly what I did before is yeah. um, keeping the fingers straight and then um, the other thing is I think keeping the fingers curved, that's also a big thing. Not collapsing the fingers in the yes. lower positions. Yeah. Yes, and also the shifting is very important to mm. stay relaxed because sometimes people get nervous and then they try to hold on to the base and then they can't do the shifting. So I'm trying to work on that. Well, I hear that in your playing. It's so expressive. And one of the great things that we have in the modern world is being able to hear artists like yourself sharing your music and your musical journey. And I've been following you on Instagram for years and I was reviewing your videos in the last few days and I can find videos of you playing there when you're practicing like a G major scale over two octaves <laughs> and you're quite young and then you sort of fast forward and you're playing all of this incredible music. And how have you found the experience of sharing online? Would you recommend it to new students? It's very open, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, it started as a, as a motivation for myself mm. when I moved to England. 
Um, it was during the quarantine, so the university was closed for a year. Wow. So I was I stuck I was stuck in my room, and that was my only kind of like motivation to to get up and practice. And I knew that I had to um, record the video. And also my family also made an Instagram account to follow me. So they could see that I'm really working hard. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> so first, first that was just for me, and then, and then I saw that people are started to follow me and message me that it's that it's inspiring to see that I'm practicing, and then it inspired them to practice. So it was it was very nice to hear. There is such a positive environment, I think, in the in the double bass world yes. online and on Instagram, and I love watching bass players like yourself and uh, your. Yeah, and the standard is just incredible. But uh, it's great that you're you're out there sharing and being vulnerable about the experience, and uh, you know, and it, yeah, it must have been unbelievable to be here in the in the quarantine period and and focusing on your on your playing. Going forward, what do you have coming up? I mean, the what's next for a night with the double bass? In fact, here we go. We have this wonderful. Uh, uh, mug here that uh, Gerda has very kindly given me. So I believe you can actually, you've got your own merchandise. This is obviously yes. something that you're taking seriously. These, mm. This recital program, um, what's next for it? You've been playing some Christmas music as well? Yes, we recently had a concert with my colleague and friend Gabriel Rodriguez. Oh, wonderful musician. a very great musician. bass player, yes. And, um, and we are planning to do more of these, hopefully, yeah. in 2024. And also I have a new project coming up. It's a it's a bass concerto, which will wow. be premiered by me. And um, When sorry. is this due? <laughs> Can you tell us anything about it or is it still kind of under wraps? It's, it's still uh, <laughs> still under under wraps. Yeah. Yeah, I mean lastly, just before we wrap things up, people always want to know about basses and new equipment and stuff. Where did you get this wonderful instrument that you're playing today? It's very beautiful. Thank you. So this is a Martin bass. Great. So it's a solo model. Um, about the strings, I'm using the Dadarius Kaplan orchestra string set. I've been very happy with this string set and it works great for me. Um, do you change when you're playing in, so do you play a lot in solo tuning or are you usually playing in orchestra tuning? Yes, I used to play a lot in solo tuning, but um, right now I'm just using these strings, orchestra yeah. cool. tuning and it works well. Sounds sounds beautiful. And so we've got the bass, we've got the strings. How about the bow? Which is this a doling? Yes. You said yes. This is a doling bow. Did you yeah. get that in in the UK or was that? It's such no, a lovely... this is from Hungary. Oh, that's yes. right. Well, all of it works so well, and we really appreciate you coming here to share your story, your music, and hopefully we can uh, hear you play in just a moment. So, on behalf of the audience, myself, thank you for coming, and thank you for everything you do, Gerda. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you.